the FNH 57. Let's check it out. The FNH 57 is just one of those dream guns. I mean, they are fairly expensive. The ammunition's not too cheap, but the recoil is super mild, and these things are humming. These have been used as a military round, not only in the P90, but also in the uh, 57. Uh, the caliber is so soft and so sweet to shoot, and that's one of the things I think that's a big appeal. Plus, the weight of this gun is just phenomenally light. Now I've been wanting to try the FNH 57 for a number of years and I've shot a couple very limited so I really wanted to try it out and to see what all the fuss was about. GunProDeals.com you know got in touch with me and said hey we've got some of these in stock and we'd love to send them to you and so I want to thank GunProDeals.com just for giving me the experience of this pistol and so now let's take a look and see what it's all about. The one great thing about the firearms world is there are a lot of different choices out there. I mean, and there are a lot of different configurations, all the way from the super popular down to the more of a niche type market. And that's one of the things we find with the FNH 5.7. This caliber was designed in the early 1990s as a directive from NATO to replace the 9mm as a sidearm. And there were a number of reasons. One of the big things about this pistol is the super low recoil but these do not over penetrate and they can defeat uh, level 2 and some level 3 body armor Kevlar helmets, automobile glass, things like that. So this is a great handgun especially in an urban environment. So the first thing we're going to do is to make sure the gun is unloaded we're going to remove the magazine double check the chamber and it's empty. The magazines are 20 rounds they are fully polymer and uh, just a very lightweight, in fact the pistol, everything about this gun is super lightweight. It does come with three magazines um, and that will give you 60 rounds total which is really pretty incredible <laughs> as far as a self defense caliber. The feed lips are polymer and uh, there have been a few reports of these having cracks in them but of course we didn't have any problems. But you can see they're pretty solid body. Uh, they do have windows on the side as you can see it goes up to 20. And there is a small little catch here if you need to rip that magazine out in case you have a malfunction. The companion to the FN57 is the PS90, or originally the P90, which is a bullpup design FN rifle that was made specifically under NATO standards. And that has a magazine over the top and it ejects the rounds from the bottom. It's a really cool configuration, very light recoil, um, and you're going to get a little better ballistics out of the rifle than you are out of the pistol. Now the 5.7 caliber was really based more on the ballistics of a 22 Hornet. And 22 Hornet at one point was considered by the U.S. Air Force in a survival rifle configuration. And so this is, there's no parent company to the 5.7 by 28. Uh, this is a completely from the ground up designed round. A lot of people try to compare this to a 22 Magnum but there's a lot of advantages with the 5.7 over 22 Magnum. For one, it's a centerfire cartridge which makes it much more reliable. Uh, even though 22 rimfire is a lot more reliable than it used to be, uh, it's still not as reliable as a good centerfire cartridge. It looks very similar to a miniaturized 223 or 556. It is neck down um, and it's just, it's a small caliber, but it's moving really fast. In fact, uh, these are clocked at about 2,600 feet per second, especially this round in particular. This is the SS-198LF, and it is a lead-free, copper-jacketed, aluminum core bullet. 
and these things will fly. Now you see the green tip and they are purported to go through bulletproof vest and so we're actually going to do some testing with that at the range. It does produce about 30% less recoil than your standard 9mm. Uh, it's really a lot like shooting a 22. Uh, and with the frame of this pistol, it's a pretty large pistol, even though it only weighs about 21 ounces unloaded. Now the 5.7 by 28 millimeter is supposed to defeat uh, level 2 body armor, or body armor for handgun. And we're going to shoot with a 9 millimeter out of this Walther P99, and then we're going to shoot the 5.7, and we're going to check it out and see if they penetrate. We're going to go with 9 millimeter first, we're going to shoot it on the left side. Now we're going to use the 5.7, we're going to go on the right side. Okay, right here we have the entrance of the 9mm, here the 5.7, and uh, we're going to pull this out of the cover. Here we have the entrance. It's really puffy. This is not puffy. This came straight through with the 5.7, the 9mm. It split it, but it didn't exit. Here on the back, you can see that it kind of split it, but here we have a definite hole. That 5.7 just punched through that without any trouble. Now I can feel the 9mm in there, so we're going to go ahead and just cut this. Here's the front, and it caught it, man, really quick. First, second layer. Here's the round. This was a 115 full metal jacket round. Uh, so, wow, look at all that left over with the nine. Here, we can see the hole right through with the 5.7. It's pretty impressive. And this is the SS-198 LF round. It's the 28 grain lead-free bullet. Here we have Freedom Munitions. This is the 115 grain full metal jacket. Uh, this is the remanufactured, but it didn't even come close to penetrating. And AR-500 armor, this is excellent. I've used this quite a bit, done a lot of testing with it. And uh, I was keeping this in my truck just for those what if things, but uh, I guess I'll be getting back in touch with AR-500 because I need another one. And guys, to be honest, it's pretty close to the 22 TCM by Rock Island Armory. Uh, the 22 TCM is really mild recoil, and but it's yet it's really flying at the end of the barrel. But these are typically in a 1911 frame. Now the 5.7 comes in this FDE color. It also comes in a black, uh, but the slide is always in the black color. Uh, this is really unique because it is a polymer casing over a metal steel sleeve inside. And we'll look at that a little bit more when we disassemble the pistol. Uh, it does have a full M1913 Picatinny rail, um, and the grip itself, it's pretty ergonomic, but the round is fairly long, so it's a long handful, <laughs> but yet because of the recoil, it's really grippable. Uh, it is ergonomic. It has the FN uh, pyramids that come all the way down and around, so it gives you a really good solid feel when you're gripping the pistol. And then, of course, with this finger, the thumb right here uh, with the beaver tail, it just kind of nestles in your hand. Now, the controls are very unusual. Uh, here at the front, we have a safety, and that's where typically your slide release is. But then we have our slide release back here at the back. Uh, one of the things about the safety, though, is that it's pretty intuitive. I mean, you can use your trigger finger, you can fire it, bring it up, engage your safety, and then bring it down. Now, one of the issues with that is if you're used to a safety right here, this is going to be a real training issue. You'll need to really train with this to make sure that you get that. And, you know, like anything, you know, you can get accustomed to it. Uh, but I really like it in a way, but yet because I'm so used to that safety back here, if I'm using a gun with a safety, uh, that's definitely going to be an issue. So uh, that's just one thing to consider. Also, we have our takedown lever right here, and we'll take a look at that in a minute. Now, one of the things I definitely do not like about the pistol is that it has a magazine disconnect. Uh, so once the magazine is removed, the gun is pretty much inoperable. It does have rear and front cocking serrations. Uh, they're kind of like little bars, and uh, they're very easy to grip. I mean, it has a good texture to it. 
Here you can see they're kind of raised up and then encased in this little uh, window. And then right here at the front, same thing. But it's a really easy slide to bring back. Uh, and that's one of the things that's an appeal to this gun is the low recoil, the lightweight, and the ease of being able to cock this. Which it also has cocking ears right here. And that's one of the things the VP9 has uh, that's kind of a new concept, but yet it's been on the 5.7 all along. Here we have a rear adjustable sight, and then we have a front post. This is a three-dot sight. Uh, these sights are really high on the pistol. Uh, in fact, it's almost like suppressor sights. As you can see, the, the length, the height of that blade is really high. It has a pretty high bore axis, and then with that sight up high, you really feel like you're looking over the pistol a little more than you are typically. Uh, and then we have that front post, and it's standing up. But guys, I'll tell you, it's pretty easy to see. The barrel is cold hammer forged. It's 4.8 inches in length and the barrel is chrome lined and the chamber is chrome lined. It's 8.2 inches in length, it's 5.7 inches in height, and it's about 1.4 inches in width. So it's a fairly large pistol. In fact, it's a little bit larger than the Glock 17. But it weighs about the same as a Glock 26. As far as the action of the pistol, it is a hammer fired concealed hammer. A single action pistol. So every time that the slide is racked, it's going to pre cock the hammer. Um, and we have a little bit of take up right here, and then it's a nice crisp snap. It's very smooth, even though it does stack a little bit right there, and you can see the reset. It's very, very quick, but it's out front. Right there. Right there. And then pull. Again, it's about six and a half pounds. We tried it a number of times with our Lyman trigger gauge and it was coming up right at six and a half pounds. And I want to thank Gun Pro Deals for sending the ammunition. They sent some of the FN. This is the 5.7 by 28. And this ammunition is available on the GunProDeals.com website. While down at the range, we had no malfunctions at all. Uh, it was FN ammunition, and it just shot really smooth. The gun is just low recoil. I mean, it's, there's just not a lot of recoil, even though the pistol itself is very lightweight. Uh, with this polymer slide, which really starts out kind of funny, uh, but it does have a, a lining, a steel lining inside, but it makes this gun very handy and portable, easy to shoot. Um, you can do transitions very easily. Uh, the sights are rather large, so you know you're able to pick those up pretty quickly uh, without any trouble. They are three dot, and they are the rear is adjustable, uh, so the gun handles very nice. And of course, the FN has a really good concept of their grips on all their pistols. Uh, I'll tell you, you know, you just grab hold, and it's just, it just feels like it's going to be placed in your hand. A lot of that has to do with the aggressive stippling. So um, you know, the gun just shot well. The range time was just a lot of fun. That's real unusual markings uh, with the 5.7. It's moving pretty quick, but it's a really small bullet. There's no pocking. Uh, it didn't create any kind of dents or anything, so that's good, but um, just thought that was pretty interesting. Right here we have 9mm all around it. And I want to thank ShootSteel.com for supplying the steel targets, and they do offer a 10% Such 00 discount uh, if you buy steel from ShootSteel.com. Now one of the design features of the 5.7x28 was for it to be a little bit unstable, to be to tumble when it hits flesh. Uh, it's really to create a lot of tissue damage, and yet they don't over penetrate. Uh, so it just really causes a you know, catastrophic gunshot wound uh, if you ever have to use this. Now I'm not going to get into all the ballistics, but here we have the 5.7x28 round, uh, and then the 222 Magnum, and then we have the 9mm the 556 or 223 and then the 22 TCM. Uh, to be honest, it's the closest to the 22 TCM as far as ballistics. Uh, your 556 obviously is a lot larger, you've got a lot more range. This was really made for about 200 yards max. A lot of people try to compare it to the 22 Magnum, but there are a lot of advantages uh, with the 57. Uh, one of the big ones is it has a lot higher velocity and typically it has a little bit larger bullet and then it's being necked down and again because it is a centerfire caliber. 
Now, as far as ammunition cost, uh, your standard American Eagle starts out at about $16 a box, which is about what your 45 ACP runs. So this is not the cheapest ammunition just to run out and plink with. Uh, but, in fact, a lot of the ammunition, just like this uh, SS-198LF, this stuff runs about $26 a box. So, you know, there's a lot of disparity in price as far as what you're looking for. There are a lot of capable rounds in the FNH line, uh, but there are also some good rounds just in the standard commercial lines. And really, to be honest, guys, this is more of a specialty load. This is not something you're going to go out and just shoot hundreds of rounds. Uh, it's really made for a self-defense pistol, a personal self-defense. And uh, that's really what this is great at. Now we're going to disassemble the pistol. We want to make sure the gun is unloaded. So we're going to move our magazine, check the chamber, and it's empty. Now we need to reinsert the magazine because of the magazine disconnect. So go ahead and pull the trigger. We're going to remove the magazine. Now we're going to pull it back just a little bit. And then right here, this little lever, you just want to make it go forward. And then everything comes right off. Here we have our barrel assembly. Again, this is a cold hammer forged barrel, and you see that the recoil spring is integrated in with the barrel. And this is a really unique design. Um, again, this gun was uh, designed from the ground up. Here you can see the inner metal sleeve that fits, just nestles into the polymer housing. But as you can see, it's a, it's a good quality piece. Here we have the frame, definitely different than your traditional. Uh, there is a bar that rides right here and actually rides right inside the slide. It's just a very different type design. Now as far as reassembly, we just put our barrel back in. Uh, one thing you want to do is make sure this doesn't cant. It needs to be just straight up. Right here, we're going to put it into the frame in this area. So we drop it down. And then just bring it back and you're good to go. Check for function. We've got to insert our magazine and there we go. Now aside from FN, the 5.7 has not really been adopted by any of your major gun companies. Um, in fact, there's only about three companies other than FN that makes uh, firearms for the 5.7 by 28. Uh, that's XL Arms. They make two pistols and two rifles in kind of an AR configuration. Uh, Masterpiece Arms has a, a couple of options for the 5.7. And then the AR-57 LLC, which makes a, an AR-15 uh, that shoots the 5.7. And it actually ejects the rounds out of the magazine well. It has one of those, uh, like the PS-90 uh, drums that fit over the top. Nate at Gun Pro Deals sent the FN57 for this test and evaluation. Um, and also, the ammunition is available on the Gun Pro Deals website. Uh, these guns run uh, $1399 MSRP, so they're not cheap by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, typically, on the Gun Pro Deals website, these are $1249 which gives you a pretty decent break. But one of the things that Nate's going to run at Gun Pro Deals, he said, I'm going to sell the FN 57s for $1,099, which is a great price. And so that's going to be a long-standing price. All you have to do is put in 57150, just like it is right here on the screen, and you can get it for $1,099. So if you're really looking for a 57, GunProDeals.com is a place to check it out. And I want to thank Gun Pro Deals for their help and for making this video possible. One of the roles that I think would be great for this gun is in a home defense role as far as at home. I mean, it's a little bit large for concealed carry, uh, but definitely it is really moving out and it would be a good self-defense round. Um, and so the light recoil, especially for a female uh, or even for a young adult, this would be a great gun, new shooter, uh, taking them out to the range with this gun would really ease a lot of fear uh, before you move up to some of the larger calibers. And so there's just a lot of great things about this handgun. Uh, one of the big cons, obviously, is the price. Um, you know, the price is around $1,100 to $1,200. And so for most people, this is going to be a dream gun. Uh, but it's a lot of fun. And if you have the funds, uh, you know, I definitely recommend because it's a totally different experience than your typical centerfire handgun. Other than that, I can't say there were any real cons. Uh, the ammunition can be a little pricey as well, and so that may also be, and two, being able to locate that on a regular basis. Um, so, but again, this pistol is a fairly expensive pistol in the first place, and for those who really want to shoot this, they'll be able to, you know, go out and find the ammunition. 
Of course, to be honest with you, with online sources now, that's not really an, an excuse. And there are a lot of different places out there you can buy it. So again, I want to give a big thanks to GunProDeals.com. Uh, they have great prices. They run a bunch of cool specials. And I really appreciate their help in making this video possible and sending this gun for the test and evaluation. Be strong. Be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic. Uh, this came from Gun Pro Mag. This came from Gun Magware. This come from Grow Gun. Ported to be uh, a billet. Okay. Now these pistols come in two different configure. Now these cut. Okay. Now the and it's an inch point, and it's just under an inch, and okay. and it's about one and a quarter. And of course, this ammunition is available on the Gun Pro, and this ammunition and this ammunition is five seven on my way to heaven.